Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Issa, thank you for holding this hearing. Mr. Chairman, there have been several references today during this hearing to a perfect storm. And I think it's important to remind everyone that in a perfect storm, the entire crew of the Andrea Gale perished. And the purpose of this hearing is because we've got paddles on the chest of two patients, and we're trying to determine how much voltage to apply to resuscitate them. Mr. Mudd, I'm going to start with you because you are one of the rare people who can say my name is Mudd with a straight face. I want to start by asking you about an email exchange you had with your chief risk officer, Enrico Dallavecchia. For six months, beginning in March of 2006, Fannie Mae implemented a new business initiative to buy subprime loans. And under this program, Fannie concluded one deal to buy $74 million in subprime loans from a company called New Century, and it also began negotiating new deals. On August 16th of 2006, the Corporate Risk Management Committee approved a final plan to purchase up to $5 billion in whole subprime loans in 2006. Two months later, on October 28th, 2006, which ironically is the same day the Great Depression really began in earnest, Mr. Dallavecchia, your chief risk officer, sent an email to you raising concerns about this huge increase in subprime purchases. And I'm going to ask them to put that email up so that we can all take a look at it. And I want to read to you the portions that are in these call-out boxes. Dan, I have a serious problem with the control process around subprime limits. Ramping up business much faster than we agreed upon less than two months ago is de facto preventing me to exercise my reserved authority to determine limits without damaging relationships with customers. Mr. Mudd, Mr. Dallavacchi is saying that you are ramping up too quickly on the subprime purchases and that this acceleration prevented him from determining appropriate risk limits. Isn't that true? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. Could you repeat the, the question part of your question? Yes. What he's saying here is that your company was ramping up too quickly on subprime purchases, and this acceleration was preventing him from determining appropriate risk limits. Isn't that true? I believe that's what he was saying in his note. Yes, sir. And then later in the email, if we can go to the next slide, he says, we approved twice in March and in June to buy subprime loans without having completed the new business initiative. And then in bold, this is a pattern emerging of inadequate regard for the control process. It seems like in this portion of the memo, your risk officer believed that you were rushing into billions of dollars worth of subprime loan purchases without really knowing what you were doing. Isn't that what he's saying here? Yes, and there's a part of the memo that's my response to him that's covered up by, the, that. by the box. We're going to get to which, that. Which th that furthers the conversation on the topic. Right. But when he sent this email to you, did you agree with his assessment? Uh, that's why I wrote above it, it's a serious matter, and if the facts are supportive, you and I will come down hard. That's what it says above that. So he came and saw me. We went through the facts. We got the folks in the table. We had the discussion, and we went back to address those concerns. That was exactly the process, sir. Right. So let's go to that portion of the memo that you replied, and your reply was dated on Sunday, October 29th at 1242 p.m., and as you've indicated, it says this is a serious matter. So you agreed with his assessment that it was a serious matter, correct? Yes. And then you said, and if the facts are supportive, we will come down hard. Were the facts supportive? Uh, as often happens in these type of situations, facts were partially supportive. I would say in this case, maybe even mostly supportive. So and did you come down hard? Yes, we did. What we, did you do? We we called all of the people that were involved into the process uh, into the room, had a discussion, had a meeting, laid out the laid out the rule. The, the if I can just rewind for one second, the the role of a independent chief risk officer at Fannie Mae and at most financial institutions was a relatively new role. So the rules of the road were kind of being written in real time, and what I wanted to do was to make it very clear that the, C the CRO actually not only reported to me but also reported to the board. I wanted to make it very clear in this process of coming down hard 
that that person was my right hand on risk that person needed to be part of the process that person needed to be heard and if that person needed to discuss or report independently to the board he or she had the ability to do so well mr. Mudd I think the American taxpayers are the ultimate jury on whether you came down hard and I think the record indicates you didn't come down hard instead you continued the acceleration and let me show you a presentation made to the credit risk committee less than three months later on January 17th of 2007 can we have that please well in that presentation management proposed expending the subprime business unit in 2007 purchasing eleven billion dollars more in subprime loans and eliminating restrictions on the volume of mortgages you could purchase with lower borrower scores and unverified incomes so in effect you were increasing your levels of risk rather than moderating them as your chief risk officer had recommended and it looks to me and I think it looks to a lot of taxpayers like you were going in exactly the opposite direction risk officers recommendations well, no, back right. Sir, if I may, his, his memo, I have a serious problem with the control process around the subprime limit. So he wasn't expressing a problem with subprime as a broad issue as characterized. He was expressing a concern around the control processes, the sign-offs, the coding, the filing, and so forth. And that control process was the, was, was the subject of this discussion and of the remediation. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a separate issue than an entire broader debate that we had in the company and with the board and with the regulator and elsewhere about the subprime market in general. So I, I would just recommend it's important to keep the, the two issues somewhat separate. Well, I understand that, but the whole purpose of having control processes in place in a company like yours is to make sure you're making rational business decisions based upon the best information available and that you're following a rational process to make those decisions. So if the control processes are not in proper working order, it prevents you from following a rational decision-making model, doesn't it? The gentleman, yes, and that's why it's important to fix them. The gentleman's time has expired. Mr. McHenry from North Carolina. I like the new